Have you been diagnosed with prediabetes or are you at risk? Are you feeling confused or worried because of all the misinformation about it out there? Here is everything that you need to know about prediabetes. Welcome back to the world of E-Pacific. I'm your accountability buddy, Noble Woods. At E-Pacific, we are committed to providing you the most current information regarding exercise, health, fitness, nutrition, and weight loss tips. In 2011, I was diagnosed as pre-diabetic and I was devastated. You see, my aunt Fernell was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes in the prime of her life. Growing up, I watched my aunt as she poked and stuck herself several times a day. The thought of going through that paralyzed me. My aunt Fernell lived until she was 83, so I know that you can live a long time managing this disease. My goal is to avoid it at all costs. In this episode, I will discuss the mental and physical challenges of living with prediabetes and provide information and resources for others living with this condition. Prediabetes is a condition in which your blood sugar level is high but not high enough to be identified as diabetes. Prediabetes affects 38% of adults in the United States, but at least 22% of those people have not been diagnosed. In addition to type 2 diabetes, Prediabetes can result in other serious health conditions, such as blindness, kidney failure, strokes, heart disease, and Alzheimer's disease. Type 2 diabetes patients may lose their toes, feet, or legs. However, prediabetes does not have to progress to type 2 diabetes. You can stop both of them. But there is so much false information about prediabetes that it can be difficult to distinguish between misinformation and the reality about prediabetes. While false information about prediabetes can be dangerous, being well informed can change your life. If you have been diagnosed with prediabetes, you should not panic. It would be best if you arm yourself with science based information. Here are some most common myths and facts about prediabetes that you should be aware of to make the best health decisions possible. The most common myth centers around the ever present sugar. The consumption of sugar does not cause diabetes. On the other hand, a sugary diet can lead to obesity and overweight which are risk factors for prediabetes and type 2 diabetes. This is a common misconception, and it's easy to see why. Blood sugar levels are crucial in diabetes. Sugar, on the other hand, is not a contributing factor. The story is always complicated. There appears to be a link between regular soda consumption and the risk of developing type 2 diabetes. Allow me to elaborate and clarify. Even after controlling for energy intake and body mass index, a large study published in 2013 found that drinking more soda increases the risk of developing the disease. According to the survey, other drinks, such as fruit juices, did not have this association with prediabetes. According to statistics, most people with prediabetes eventually develop diabetes, but the devil is in the details. If you do nothing to treat your prediabetes, you will undoubtedly develop type 2 diabetes. However, managing your prediabetes with healthy lifestyle choices and sometimes medication can cut your risk by more than 50%. Do you see where this can get confusing? Even delaying the onset of type 2 diabetes, which can lead to diabetes-related complications, is a worthwhile investment. Insulin resistance, which leads to high blood sugar and diabetes, worsens with age, making it a risk factor, but it can also lead to prediabetes and diabetes in young adults. Prediabetes or diabetes affects more than one-fourth of adults aged 18 to 44 and more than two-thirds of adults aged 65 and up. Nowadays, age 65 does not make you elderly, but it is still worthwhile to take care of yourself so that the 10, 20, 30, or even more years you may have left are as enjoyable as possible. The most common risk factors don't necessarily cause prediabetes, but can make you susceptible. Have a waist larger than 40 inches in circumference for men and 3 to 5 inches in circumference for women. Consume large amounts of red and processed meat, sugary beverages, and little fruit, vegetables, olive oil, whole grains, nuts, or whole grains. Over the age of 45, you are Black, Indigenous, Latino, or Pacific Islander. Overweight or obese particularly if you have excess weight around your midsection, belly fat. Have a sleep disorder, such as sleep apnea, or work rotating ships or nights. Have a high cholesterol level, a high triglyceride level, a low HDL level, and a high LDL level. Avoid physical activity. Have gestational diabetes. Diagnosed with polycystic ovary syndrome. To enhance your body's responsiveness to insulin, you may be on medication, such as glucophage, which is one brand of metformin hydrochloride. 
However, metformin is prescribed to less than 1% of people with prediabetes. Lifestyle changes are the most effective way to treat or reverse prediabetes. Diet, exercise, and weight loss are the big three lifestyle changes. A smoking cessation program is also critical for smokers. Some changes, such as stress reduction, may appear minor, but they can significantly impact many aspects of life and should not be overlooked. Metformin was less beneficial than physical activity, and weight loss in preventing type 2 diabetes is critical. Even if you have been diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, it is not too late to make healthy lifestyle changes that can have a significant impact. Your efforts to live a healthier lifestyle will pay off by making it easier to manage your health and diabetes. The good news is that diabetes prevention measures are similar to those used to prevent heart disease. When you treat one, you treat the other as well. To prevent and manage prediabetes, follow these steps. Lose weight by eating a healthy diet. Losing 5% to 10% of your body weight can make a significant difference. Choose an activity that you enjoy, such as walking. Attempt to have at least 30 minutes of exercise five days a week. Start with a shorter time and work your way up to a half hour if necessary. Before you go any further, consult your doctor. Quit smoking. Control your blood pressure and cholesterol levels. If you have a high risk of diabetes, take a medication like metformin, glucophage, to lower your blood sugar, only with your doctor's advice. It goes something like this. During digestion, carbohydrates break down into glucose, entering the bloodstream and raising blood sugar. As a result, foods that are low in carbs do not affect blood sugar, according to this logic. The truth is that what you eat does matter, even if it has no direct effect on blood sugar. For example, protein slows digestion and contributes to preventing blood sugar spikes. While healthy fats can help improve insulin resistance and thus reduce the risk of prediabetes and diabetes, unhealthy fats can exacerbate insulin resistance. Fatty red meat, fried foods, and processed meats are all foods that may increase your risk of developing diabetes. If the thought of going on a strict diet regime for the rest of your life to lose 50 or 100 pounds is keeping you from acting now, you might find comfort in the fact that losing just a few pounds can make a significant difference in diabetes risk. Losing just 5 to 7% of your body weight, or about 10 pounds, can cut your prediabetes risk in half. Prediabetes goes unnoticed until diagnosed because it is almost always asymptomatic. Fatigue, blurred vision, excessive thirst, and weight loss are classic diabetes, symptoms that usually appear after the disease progresses. Tests for blood sugar are the only way to determine if you have prediabetes or diabetes. You can get a good idea of whether you're at risk for prediabetes or diabetes by taking a short five-question risk test in one minute. It's true that having a diabetic parent or sibling increases your risk of developing diabetes. In fact, prediabetes, type 1, and type 2 diabetes are linked to a family history of diabetes. Many people with diabetes, on the other hand, have no close relatives who have the disease. There you have it. I hope that this has shed some light on the facts about prediabetes. It really eased my mind when I did the research and realized that my situation wasn't as bleak as I thought. I was once told that knowing a little about something is more dangerous than knowing nothing at all. That is why we have the whole story at E-Pacific Health. Until next time, stay the course.